Now, in this lecture, we'll take a look at how to use uh, Google Cloud error reporting. So error reporting provides a single place to monitor error conditions from all apps and services in a Google Cloud project and also from Amazon EC2 applications. So here now we'll see how to simulate an error from a service in a cloud project and use the error reporting to view the error and change the error status so, this, so that other people on your team know and we will we'll also set up notifications so that you'll know when new types of errors occur. So first steps, go to cloud.google.com, change your account here if necessary, and let's click on go to console. So now it is easier to do a cleanup when you create a new project uh, because you can just delete the project, but we'll use an existing project just so that you can see how to uh, clean it up. But you can always go to click on new project. I'm not using it because there's a limit to how many new projects you can create. So I'm just going to use the existing project. So first activate Cloud Shell by clicking on this icon. So while that is creating, uh, let me open this text file. So this is there in the resources. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to generate 11 sample errors in the Cloud Shell. So copy paste this into the cloud shell okay the cloud shell is opened up if you want to change the project you can always use this uh, command here gcloud config set project and project tidy i can see that it is set to our current project so no worries i'm not doing anything i might just open this in a new window just so that it's uh, a bit easier to read and let's paste this and as you can see, it's going to start reporting 11 different errors. And you can see all sample errors have been reported. So now we can close this here. Now let's go to error reporting. And here you can see the service error reporting. Let's go into the service. So the error reporting dashboard here now shows our application, uh, the errors that we have just generated and it shows the number of occurrences of each error. So um, by default, this automatically reloads every five seconds, but if you want to force an immediate reload, you can click on auto reload. Now you can click on the error to view the error details, which contains all of the available information about the error, including link to the source code. So as you can see, this was our 11 errors starting at zero and all the way to 10. Now we can configure notifications to notify us when a new type of error arrives. So notifications aren't sent when there are new occurrences of existing errors. So to enable notifications, go back to the error details screen and you can see that there is a you can turn on notifications. So let's click on turn on notifications. And that's pretty much it. You will get uh, notifications to this email address. If that is hidden, uh, click on here and you can see that turn on new notifications is here for some reason if you can't see it. So now let's try to act uh, generate new types of errors uh, that will send us a notification. So let's uh, try this second command here. So as you can see, the first one <coughs> was Java uh, Lang runtime exception. Here it is Java Lang array index out of bound exception. So it's a different type of error. So we'll go back to the cloud shell and let's run this. So this time it is created three different error notification, uh, three different errors. So now let's open our email. Just make sure you're going into the right email account. And here you can see stack driver notification, new error. So this is the error, it just came just now. So this is the Java Lang array index out of points exception. If you click into it, you can go into the error reporting page. So while the sample messages that we just now generated from scripts fully simulate error conditions and error, error reporting, 
Let's see how we can generate error from a real service. Um, for example, now we're going to see how to do it from an app engine. So there are a number of steps to do here. So again, the steps are documented. Uh, I'll walk you through the steps. So we're continuing to use the Cloud Shell. So first step is to clone an existing project into our Cloud Shell. So let's use this command to clone an already existing project. Next, we are going to create an isolated Python environment and activate it. So run these commands one by one. So we are going into a directory and then we are going to create a virtual environment of Python. And then finally, we are going to activate that environment. Final step, let's install the dependencies. And now let's run the application. We should see a message like, hello world. When we click on this, so let's click on this and uh, we can see the message, hello world. So that's good. So let's press control three to stop this. Now we are just running this within the uh, cloud shell. Now it's time to deploy this to an app engine. So let's use G cloud app deploy. So Choose a region, I'm just going to use US West 1, so that is 20. And so this is going to take a few minutes. So this is going to create a new app engine and then deploy our project onto it. Say yes. Okay, so it's been deployed. So now we can simply use this G Cloud app browse to take a look at our deployed application and it gives the URL, you can click on it and it's going to show hello world. Okay, so nothing special so far. We have deployed something to an app engine. Now we need to create an error here. We can use VI editor to change things directly in the cloud shell, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use editor so that it's easier. So click on open editor and click on Explorer. So open folder. So we want to open this particular folder. So click on open. So the path is uh, go to app engine and then standard Python three. Hello world and main.py. So we want to change this hello world to say hello world plus thousand. This is actually an error in Python because it is illegal to concatenate a string and an integer in this method. So let's close this so it would save it. And now let's redeploy this, we can close the editor. So let's use the app arrow to go through your, to your previous command. So let's do G cloud app deploy. So as you can see, it uploaded one file, the one that we have changed. And now it's deploying the service again. So again, we can use uh, the G Cloud app browse and click on this. And if you don't see an error message, uh, it might take a minute or two to uh, uh, for the new version to be activated. But here we can see that there is a error straight away. And now if we go to cloud uh, error reporting, 
we should see a new type of uh, error uh, just now and here you can see uh, you can only concatenate string not integer to string uh, in hello uh, the method name is hello and in main dot uh, py and you should also have received a notification for this so that's pretty cool so uh, clean up um, let's exit the cloud shell we don't need the cloud shell and close this window and if it was a project you could have just gone in and you could have just uh, deleted the project but since this is the default project I can't delete it so I'm going to go into the app engine and then go to settings and simply disable the application you have to give the app ID and say disable And then also you must have seen that it has created three buckets of storage. This was for deploying the application. So let's choose all this and let's delete these buckets. And type delete and say delete. So that was a quick demo of how to use Google cloud error reporting and also get notifications from the same